Hello everybody and welcome to this video. There is a problem in Eevee at the moment and that is round objects don't seem to render with volumetric. So if you've got this particular issue, I found a solution until the Blender devs managed to get there. So let's have a look over at Blender and we can see here we've got a cube and a sphere. And if we turn rendering mode on, we can see with volumetrics, they both render as cubes. Now what I believe is happening is a bounding box is going around our objects and therefore we just cannot see, there we go, that is my drawing that I failed to draw because I turned overlays off, but a bounding box is being drawn around this and so that's how the volumetrics are being calculated. So we've got a bit of a problem. But there is a way around this. And it's a little bit convoluted and it does put a bit more pressure on your system. But we can certainly get there. So let's go find out some more. Okay, so we have our default cube in front of us here. The next thing we need is something else. And that's going to be a sphere. What curvier object can you get? Now, I'm going to keep them in the same location in our scene, but I do need to make sure there's a material set up right from the word go. So I'm just going to hide my cube in the hierarchy for this for this moment and add a material in, new material. I'm going to call it volumetric or just volume for the moment. Now, I could go into the shader tab if I wanted to at the top, or I could just go to the surface properties and remove. And then add on a principled volume under the volume settings. Both works around. I'm going to make the color a bright white, so it's there. There's a couple of other things I want to do. I'm going to switch into rendered mode. Can't quite see it just yet. There's two reasons for that. Number one, it's not turned on, so let's turn it on. Under the render tab settings, make sure volumetrics has a tick in it. I'm going to also change the quality to four pixels, but that's not necessary for this example. And we can see that it's already a cube rather than what we want it to be. We'll get there, don't worry. So the next thing we need to do here is go to our lamp at the top and change it to something a bit brighter. In this case, it's going to be a sun lamp. And to really top it off, we're going to change our background color to a dark color so we can really see what's going on. Okay, so we have everything there. Now the thing that we have to do here is have our cube and our sphere selected and we need to make sure that the sphere is selected second and we're going to parent these two together. So the sphere is going to be the parent and the cube is going to be the child. So then we go control and P which will bring up the shortcut to set a parent to and we're going to set it to the object. So now the sphere is the parent and our cube is the child. And that means with the sphere selected, I'm selecting it in the outliner. Uh, we can go down to the object properties and go to instancing. Once we're at instancing, we can set it to verts. And we'll get a relatively odd shape appearing initially. Don't worry about that for the moment. We'll get there in the end. So there's a couple of options here. We can turn on rotation. We can turn off the display instancer. And we're starting to get there. You can see here a sphere made up of lots and lots of cubes. Now, there are lots and lots of cubes intersecting here. So you might want to change the scale of this cube. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to scale it in edit mode. So I'm just going to scale that inwards. And then we get a much better cube. In fact, if we scale it too small, you can see it's been separated out into loads of little cubes. We don't want that. We want to scale it up just a little. And we're, we're altering the, the actual cube mesh data here, not the spheres. And with that in mind, on the sphere, coming out of edit mode, we can change it so rotation's not there, and we get more of a Minecraft-like um, sphere going on. It's up to you which one you choose. So we're almost there now. However, because it's doing the bounding box thing, when we go to uh, shaded mode, which we are in, let's hide our cube out of the way, make sure that our sphere and our cube both have the same material. This one doesn't. Let's switch over to volume. There we go. At the moment, we just get this down here. It's just not working. You can play about it to your heart's content, and you'll get a similar thing over and over again. What we need to do is, with the sphere selected, we need to go to the object menu, we need to go to apply, and we need to make those duplicates real. The moment we do that, we get ourselves what looks like a big mess, but no, the only thing we need to do here is go find that original, or oh, blimey, let's go find it with searching because there's going to be a lot there and turn it off. And there we go. We've got a sphere volumetric. But 
this is the downside. We've also got a lot of cube instances in the scene, so you might want to put those in their own collection for the moment. That will sort that out. Or, of course, the other thing you could have done is used a sphere or other object with less vertices in it to begin with, because you obviously don't need too much. But here we go. Here's a sphere, which would be otherwise impossible. And you can do this with any shape that you want. Why don't you try it with Suzanne the monkey and see how you get on? So there we go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Hopefully, of course, the Blender developers will sort this out and it will no longer be an issue. But now we have a way of doing curved volumetrics over in Blender. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.